beautiful. We can only be me, but I don't know about you. It sure would be nice to have that voice, right? <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. So we are kicking off a new series this month entitled Sacred Audacity. And the reading from the Kabbalah Center so perfectly set up this idea that we are here as infinite potential, and that we get to embody this potential in order to bring about a healing for the entire collective humanity. One where love prevails, where love is always the answer, where peace, where wholeness is embodied and where we can see that reflected in one another. And yet it takes a boldness, a courage to stand in this knowing and to live life with the sacred invitation of gusto and verve when truly the only thing that holds us back from living this life is ourselves. And perhaps the perception of external obstacles. But as the lives of many who have gone before us demonstrate, for example, Harriet Tubman, who could make a way out of the extreme circumstances and situation that she was in, to not only experience freedom for herself, but to have the courage to go back, the audacity to go back into harm's way to free others and to stand in that courage to know that freedom is the birthright for each and every one of us. So our outlook, our willingness, our perseverance and persistence, our resilience are all crucial pieces to the sacred audacity. For there is truly a knowing deep within us that is always there supporting us and guiding us, that still small voice of spirit. So when we listen to that, combined with our courage and our tenacity, working in partnership with spirit, with God, with the one life, we move into a possibility mindset, opening to experience and receive infinite amounts of love, of peace, of good, as we define it, to flow through us. And what is needed is our participation, right? We have a choice. We have volition. We have agency in this life. So we can either choose to play small, to subdue our light, or we can choose to live boldly in a vibrant manner on behalf of humanity, to show up, to serve, to be of service, and to let that light flow through us and to be seen in the unique way that it only can in, as, and through each of us. We have all already been granted permission from spirit, from God, to live creatively as our own unique nature, for that is who we are. We get to choose to step up, to step out, to be our unique self in this world, to color outside the lines, and to think and act beyond our fears. 
That is key, right? So when we act intentionally, when we act humbly from that wellspring of life within, we can enjoy a bold, grand, new rising in each and every moment, knowing that life is always growing, always expanding, always transforming. So the sacred audacity fuels us to reach, to stretch, to grow into our greatest potential. So this science of mind philosophy, one of the basic tenets is that we are one. And that there is this presence, the spirit, this power for good in the universe. And when we open to it, we can allow it to use us for its own divine expression. To then act from holy boldness and sacred audacity to name and to claim and declare who we are and whose we are and what we are here for. When we know and remember who we are, this love, this peace, this wholeness, this harmony, then we can allow this to inform our words, our thoughts, our actions. Allow this all-pervading presence of good within and around us that is always waiting and ready to work in partnership with us to create a world that works in harmony for all, for all beloved beings. So we're going to look at three steps today. The first step to embody sacred audacity is to build trust and faith. To build trust and faith within, right? To lean into that infinite knowing of spirit, that within us that is greater than who we are, that is greater than what our mind says we are or what our ego may have us know us to be. As our faith grows, we begin to overcome our own doubts and can walk more assuredly with greater confidence and expectancy and faith that which, that which we desire is imminent. Our inner landscape, last week or month, we, we really looked deeply within, right? When we looked at what are some of those subconscious beliefs at play? What are some of those stories perhaps that we have taken on about ourselves that are no longer true, that no longer serve who we are today and what we are here for? And so when we allow this inner landscape by paying attention to be incongruent with our heart and our mind, this then affects our life affairs. And this is how we get to prove spirit in our own lives, to demonstrate a life that is a reflection of our truest values and heart's desires. And if you weren't around last month to do this work of navigating your inner landscape, of getting clear on your personal values, I do encourage you to go back. It's all on YouTube and discover what is there for you so that you can begin to get in alignment and first by knowing what you value, right? And then as our faith grows and expands, as we begin to participate actively in our life by allowing this law of reciprocity, of circulation to be experienced in our life, we begin to see that reflected in our experiences. And then we can say, ah, yes. And that builds our faith to continue our spiritual practices of listening, of affirmative prayer, of communing with the divine within, setting our intentions, using our affirmations to keep our mindset on that which we desire, 
and then notice what is reflected around us. So the first step is to build our trust and faith in this presence within. So what is the first step to build what? Trust and faith. And what's that trust and faith in? Within. Within. <laughs> yes. But is it with our ego? No. Spirit within. That's right. First step. Second step is cultivating our inner courage. We have to stop getting in our own way, y'all. It takes courage to even think about acting boldly, let alone doing so, right? So overcoming our fears or inhibition that may prevent us from standing in this awareness that may stop us or hold us back from shining our light or bringing our gifts to the world and being bold and allowing spirit to move through us, all of these are self-inflicted constraints. So to overcome these, we must first recognize them, right? We have to pay attention. We have to notice where those voices are. So if you start really listening and noticing, you may hear a voice that may say something like, ah, oh, but what will people think? Or can I really do this? Or I don't know that I'm good enough. I'm just not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. Or perhaps, oh, that's what will be expected of me. If I really get out there in the world and shine my light, what if all these people start wanting all these things from me? That's exhausting. <laughs> so notice what perhaps those ideas are playing in the back of your mind so that you can come face to face with them boldly, courageously, to question them. And to say, is this true? Is this thought serving my highest good and what I am here to be and do? By examining our own judgments, we can begin to notice and then overcome those fears by taking that step boldly, courageously, to allow that energy. I don't know about you, but for me, it starts as kind of like a swirling in my belly, and it's like a, a rush of energy sometimes up my spine, and it's like, ooh, there's something for me to say, right? Like I feel that aliveness awakening. Yet sometimes we are so culturally socialized and trained to think that we have to do things a certain way or it might be considered unacceptable. Or we are socialized or normalized to think that, oh, you got to stay in your lane, you know. You are this, that, and the other, then that means you can only do or behave in these ways. These ideas of the past are no longer serving our collective humanity because all people have something within them that is that spark of life to be expressed. And it's time that we begin to open up and allow more voices of folks that have been on the marginalized side of communities or oppressed communities that have been told your voices do not matter or not as important. It's time that we all cultivate that inner courage to speak this truth of love and wholeness and to let our light shine and to allow any old thoughts of how we have been conditioned or what we have been told to fall away if there is no longer a resonance, an energetic resonance with the highest good of love, a possibility of who we are and where we are becoming in this trajectory 
of spiritual awakening of the collective consciousness of our, enti our entire community. So we can ask ourselves, is what I desire to do detrimental or harmful to others? Right? This can be our litmus test. Is it something that sings to my heart and brings me joy? So these two questions, if it's something that makes us feel alive, that brings us joy, and it does no harm to others, then let that be known. And boldly, courageously shine our light and step up, wake up, step up, and make a difference. Like we say every Sunday, don't hold yourself back. Cultivate that inner courage. Step one, let's see if we're tracking here. What was step one again? Trust and faith. Step two, cultivate that inner courage. All right, so here we go. Step three, are you ready? Let spirit be the guide. Sacred audacity may guide us down paths that we once thought were impossible. It allows us to do things that we don't necessarily think that we can but yet, when we allow that something greater within us to be our guide, we can tap into that inner spiritual strength to know what to do in each and every moment. When we surrender and allow this spiritual connection to lead and guide us, we can and will accomplish great things. This spiritual connection requires trust and faith, which is our first step to cultivate. And it can be a challenge to let go of control and to surrender to anything or anyone in general, let alone an invisible presence within, right? <laughs> So no wonder so many of us struggle with this piece of surrender versus the controlling, trying to control our life or our circumstances or thinking that we somehow know better than the infinite. Yet if we let go and surrender and allow that infinite wisdom within us to lead and to guide us, we can begin to trust this divine presence and to remember that it's okay to want what we want. It's okay to have desires and to feel this activation of energy that is the very life vitality itself moving through us, seeking to be expressed as us. Do you ever find yourself, even in your own prayers sometimes, holding back, hedging your bets or playing small, right? Like you, you, you start to pray for something and then you're like, well, I, I don't know, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just pray for this and say, this would be good enough, right? Or is this just me? You know, I know sometimes I can find myself kind of scaling back on this vision for my life, thinking, well, you know, even if I, if I just experience this much or do this much, it would be okay. And yet I am hiding or limiting that innate desire and passion that God-given spirit within that is, knows no bounds, I am limiting what I am allowing myself to even get in touch with what I want for myself, for, for life, because usually for myself, a fear, fear of failure, Right? Like, maybe if I only allow myself to want this, 
it will be easier to achieve and not so hard if I fail. No one will really notice. But if I really put myself out there and I tell the world and I make a big statement that I am here for this, that's a bold move. Because then, not only am I accountable to myself, I am accountable to others. And if we are to be fully expressed and shine our light and to truly work for a world that works for all, it is calling us to step into that sacred audacity, to be bold, to stop playing small. Perhaps you are someone who considers what everyone else needs or wants before giving yourself permission to actually get in touch with what you want. And I'm talking about small things like, hey, what would you want for dinner tonight? Right? We can practice these things with the, uh, you know, very mundane details of our daily life. And this is where we can begin to build that faith and that trust and that practice by trusting ourselves to even know who we are and what we desire, to even begin to listen and get in touch with that inner wisdom. So I invite you to embody the boldness of a child that knows what they want. Any of you who have young ones in your life, or you can borrow some of ours on Sunday, <laughs> notice, right? If a child is hungry and wants a treat, they are not going to say, can I have a saltine cracker, please? No. I know my daughter, at least, she's going to ask for boba and sushi because that's what she loves and she knows it. And she is bold enough to know that it's okay to ask for what she wants. Now, she also is learning that that doesn't mean she always gets it in that moment, but it doesn't stop her from asking. When did we stop asking? When did we stop even getting in touch with what we love and what we want? So the more we begin to listen within and to cultivate this relationship with the divine of our own being, the more we can begin to trust it and to experience the good that we desire. And then that helps to affirm our faith and trust even more. And this begins to build a momentum, right? Yes. Or like a snowball, right? If you, you picture a ball of snow and it starts to roll down a hill, it gets momentum and it gets bigger. It starts collecting more of itself and bigger and bigger and bigger. So what is the momentum of your own thoughts and beliefs? Are they on lack? in limitation and doubt, thinking that I'm not enough, there isn't enough? Or are they focused on possibility, on wholeness, on abundance, on peace? So it all stop, starts by taking that one step and then the next step, one small step at a time, continuously moving forward. And each step demonstrates and can be a testimony to the power of this spiritual conviction that we are tapped into. And the more we turn to it, the more it grows and begins to build that momentum in our own lives and within our own spiritual conviction, listening for Spirit's guidance and even asking it to show us the way. This is how we develop sacred audacity one step at a time. So who's ready? There's no better time than now, y'all. There may be something that you've been wanting to do, that you've been afraid of for some reason or another, but if you allow your spiritual practice to be your guide, to allow your 
uh, use of affirmations such as, I let go of fear. I focus on faith. Using these uh, affirmative prayer, your intention, and then notice, pay attention to the stories that you tell yourself, to the feelings that come up, to the signals your body may be giving you, and go even deeper to uncover those doubts and those beliefs. And then use your imagination to retell a story in a more positive way that embraces healing for all. Perhaps you want to use a journal to start to document and to process what is coming up for you. You can get support from others in this community with a spiritual practitioner by taking the upcoming visioning course to get alignment with your highest vision. And always the powerful practice of standing in gratitude, acting as if that which you desire is already possible. It is done. And by doing this, you will start to live from sacred audacity and holy boldness. So this week, I invite you to practice these three steps. Build your faith and trust in the power within. Cultivate your inner courage and live boldly. And, of course, number three, let spirit, let love be your guide. Yes? Yes. All right. Let's take it into prayer. Let's take a deep breath now. So grateful to recognize this one life that is love. This energy, this presence that is peace, that is wholeness, that is freedom. This one life that is living and moving and having its very being in, as, and through all life. So I open now to recognize and to know that there is one life. And this life is having its way right here, right now, in, as, and through me, as love, as peace, as wholeness. And I speak this word on behalf of all those who are hearing the sound of my voice and all those who are in need of this prayer today to stand boldly in the awareness of who we are and to let this divine light shine through Allowing love to be the guide, knowing that we are here to do and to be amazing things, to show up as that point of peace and freedom and wholeness, not only for ourselves, but on behalf of all of humanity. For all are one in love and in spirit. So I'm so grateful, so grateful to know that right here, right now, God is, love is, peace is. And I allow this, I surrender to this presence within, knowing that this word is done and complete and whole as I release it now and let it be so. And so it is. So it is. 